Are we ready? Can I eat a biscuit? Yeah, you can eat a biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, welcome to Unback Travel. This is the podcast for advice and inspiration for planning trips to theme park attractions all around the world. My name is Stu, and you'll find me in the buffet car. <laughs> my name is Matt, and I do all my own shunts. And I'm JB, and my speciality is not a steamer. Although, I will pack your funnel if you pay extra. We've heard, we've seen that written on the station wall. <laughs> and this week we are joined by a very special guest. It's Pete from Theme Park Roundup. How are you doing, Pete? Hello, I uh, yeah, you're right. Thanks for letting me join you. Hey, you're very welcome. Thank you for coming on. Where can the good people on YouTube and the internet find you if they wanted to uh, know more about you? Oh well, um, obviously I'm everywhere in every corner of the uh, the internet. My OnlyFans is linked below. Uh, <laughs> Uh, you find me on uh, Theme Park Roundup on YouTube. We've also got Instagram, bit of Twitter, that kind of thing. You'll see me there. Ooh. Fantastic. Well, we make this podcast for you guys out there. So if you ever have any trip questions or need any advice, please contact us through our socials. We are Out and Back Travel on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube, and Out and Back Travel on Twitter. Get involved, guys. Get involved like Gravity Group gets involved in retracking every wooden roller coaster in the world at this moment in time. And speaking of getting involved, the people of Instagram got involved and we told them that Pete was coming on. Uh, obviously, his speciality is train travel. So um, did the internet have any questions for Pete? So Injured Ninja asks, how does it feel to share the screen with such an amazing guy? I don't know who they're talking about. <laughs> yeah, I'm wondering this. Uh, which guy? Because Matt, yeah, that's great. Jay, he's a quality <laughs> bloke. And Stu, oh, well, you know, you just have to hit it yeah, as it comes. So really, <laughs> Sorry about that. Sorry I'm here. <laughs> I think Ninja Ninja was talking about themselves. Like, how does uh, Pete feel about um, sharing the screen on Theme Park Roundup with him? Oh, God. Oh, well, that, that's the worst part about the Theme Park community <laughs> is him but you know he'll get cancelled eventually so it's all good oh have you got any goss uh, we, can we cancel him here <laughs> oh uh, may, maybe not he won't be too happy with it just yet <laughs> maybe, maybe it's a future guest experience <laughs> yeah <laughs> fantastic he actually was your booking agent to get you on on this podcast he uh, was very persistent <laughs> but he kind of wanted to use it as basically an intervention to talk to you about your train travel addiction Yes, yes. Uh, the, the thing which everybody loves to hear about, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Question two. Uh, Tabitha Twitchick asks, how many inversions on Nemesis? Oh, we like this one, don't we? Uh, that's, the answer to that is clearly four inversions. And for the people who don't really know about that, uh, that 12 years ago, when I used to work at Austin Towers, back in the day, they did a vote uh, for your favourite ride. And I appeared on a little video and literally all I said was four inversions. <laughs> Can't remember the numbers, well, but you know, <laughs> there'll be four again soon. Four inversions. Love that. Question three, Bamba123 asks, on your monthly theme park, hotels discuss for present and potential future? Yes, I, I'm, I'm thinking he's on about Hotel Wise at Thorpe, maybe. Uh, and if so, the awful tin shed compactness, not great. Potential future hotel, that'd be interesting if they ever bothered to build it. Um, but I thought I'll just add in with uh, Fort Park. I actually quite like how they're uh, doing their social channels at the moment. They seem to be quite enthusiastic and seem to show some stuff, which is probably the best thing they've ever done, ever. Um, since they ruined the park in like 2008 onwards, but you know, <laughs> little bits. Yeah, there definitely seems to be a bit more of a uh, like a, an honesty trail kind of go on down there with their socials. They uh, a lot of them have been appearing on my feed, and um, it, it's quite interesting to see it as a bit of more of a fresh take. Yeah, I also really enjoy how they just don't take any shit from people either. So they'll just like roll their eyes and stuff with stupid comments. <laughs> I just really enjoy that. <laughs> awesome. And question four, Ride Till I Die asks, 
Uh, what's the best country for trained beers? Right. Oh, there's uh, there's a fair few uh, countries over there with some wonderful trains which do restaurant cars on them. The easiest one for us lot uh, would be Deutsche Bahn in Germany, and they do beer on tap. That's very nice. Ooh. But if you don't want to be on a train and you have beer um, trains in Prague, there is a, a bar where all the drinks get served to you on a train, which I think is bloody awesome. Matt, you're going to Prague. Oh, yeah, let me write that down. I'm going in less than two weeks. <laughs> Do it. Go there. It's bloody awesome. Oh my Great God. tip. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so that's what the people of Instagram had to ask, Pete. But us as a, the Out and Back Travel team are now going to metaphorically waterboard you with some quick fire questions so you can really get under your skin and get to know Pete from Theme Park Roundup. So come are on, man. Are you ready for this, Pete? Oh, I'm eager. I've always wanted to be splashed in the face with lots and lots of stuff. So come on, come at me. Why am I going first on this? <laughs> <laughs> come on then, Pete. What's your favourite coaster of all time? Favourite coaster is Taron at Fantasia Land. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, best best theme... <laughs> what, uh, what is your best theme park trip ever? Best theme park trip. Uh, I'd say best one, Europa Park. Can always have a very solid, solid day out or a solid few days out at Europa Park. Bloody well, love the place. At worst journey to or from a theme park. Oh gosh. Worst journey. Um probably to uh Fantasia Land, Germany. Um just planes, plane delays, all that kind of awfulness that you have experiencing of it. Uh, weather conditions, fog, all that stuff. Not very enjoyable, not what you want when you're wanting to go to a park and get on rides. Definitely not when you want to come home again. So, All right, then. So what's the top of your bucket list while we're coastal-wise at the moment? Top of my bucket list, I really want to go over to America. I want to do a Velocicoaster. Um, <laughs> chances are I'll probably be doing the Madrid baby cousin version of it far sooner so that, that's kind of closer up in the, the realistic goals for me yeah right right uh which theme park roundup video has been the most fun to film oh the most fun to film uh video i would say uh Gronerland was definitely the most fun uh, it's probably the least viewed video of ours uh, but th that park is just brilliant it's just all built up on top of each other and it's just constant go 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 the weather was gorgeous and it was so relaxed and we had um talking to a staff member who was making some sort of food for us in front uh, in english just chatting um about theme parks because she's like why on earth are you here oh we just do theme parks for a living and she's like oh my god this is like my favorite thing in the world to so just uh, just chatted for bloody ages so that was really nice oh, amazing uh, poncho or no poncho uh, uh, uh depends is it valhalla or no valhalla, <laughs> oh, valhalla <laughs> definitely no, no valhalla <laughs> <laughs> valhalla definitely two or three bin ponchos for me <laughs> love that do you ever use a single rider queue uh, when it exists yes very much so <laughs> Uh, Ratatouille in Disneyland Paris or Studios Park is definitely the one to go for, even if it says like 20 minutes on the board, it's usually only about five get in there, you end up on the same rat most likely anyway Do you pay for Fast Pass? Uh, no unless I'm at Port Aventura because that's, that's just a <laughs> given isn't it <laughs> like, you have to do that or, or you have about 400 people in front of you um, but apart from that nope but I'm, I'm more than willing to have some free stuff if anybody wants to chuck some my way that'd be nice <laughs> are you for or against upcharge coaster rows uh, I'm fully against it I prefer to have a timed ticket experience system to that or Q for seven million years. So backwards more. <laughs> Love that. And then what's your most anticipated train journey to a theme park? Most anticipated? Mm -hmm. uh, mm, that's a good question, to be honest. Uh, I really want to go over to Italy again. 
and do that, or maybe Madrid. It's between those two as to which one I prefer to do most out of the two. Uh, probably Italy, to be honest. Even though I've done the parks before, I haven't done it by train. That'd be nice. Uh, who's the most famous YouTuber you've ever met? Oh, that would be Stu from Out and Back Travel. <laughs> <Yay! laughs> How many trips do you have planned this year? Oh, Christ. Uh, booked in, I've got four trips. In, in my head, probably about 700 trips, but, you know, four are booked in so far. Awesome. That's, that's all our questions. Well done, you survived. You survived the, the metaphorical waterboarding. <laughs> Oh, but I wanted more. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel like we all we all know Pete a bit better now, don't we? Um, so obviously, Pete, can you like talk us through um, kind of like why you're the train expert or known as the train expert? Uh, why am I a train expert? It's fallen into things wonderfully. Go go back into history. Imagine boom, five years ago, me as a person working at a theme park, hating my life, looking online and finding a wonderful job in the railway. Bam, straight in, curiosity kind of um, rumbles then. You kind of want to do a bit more and understand things, same as working in theme parks or anywhere really, want to know things. Uh, so start traveling about on the railways a bit more. At the same time, I started to hate uh, going by plane. Um, just never really having a great experience traveling by plane. Um, so mixture of those two together have ended up me just getting the trains absolutely everywhere. I find train travel far more enjoyable. It does take longer. It can be more expensive, uh, but they are far more enjoyable experiences. You get to see the cultures change as you go through the window and uh, talk to people and see all sorts of different scenery and different types of trains and all that kind of stuff it's interesting there we go <laughs> yeah it sounds it so like uh, casually on your days off uh, where do you go by train typically uh, I, I can go here there and everywhere uh, my favorite places to go when I do have literally a day off is to zoom up into Scotland go over to Glasgow or Edinburgh do a bit of that uh, potentially over to York York's a really nice city to wander around or Bristol if it's warm I don't like Bristol when it's cold for some reason, but when it's warm, it's a lovely place. And where were you the past couple of days? Oh, wow. Well, well, literally <laughs> the past couple of days, uh, I just went to Belgium and did the least used station in Belgium and then just travelled around random trains and also popped into Luxembourg literally for about eight hours, which was to sleep there and then come back out again. <laughs> <laughs> That's incredible. <laughs> I'd love to just like have that sense of exploring just get on a, a train and go somewhere like obviously go into Europe it sounds amazing yeah it was very nice particularly as uh, we had a sort of plan um but every time we turned up somewhere a train would be cancelled on one of the routes or the routes would be closed so it's just a case of we'll go there that sounds interesting and then <laughs> travel and then work it out when you're on the train as to whether to change things or anything like that it's nice it sounds amazing. You ever thought of like running a group trip to take everyone with you? Or uh, no, there'll be way too much, uh, <laughs> too much effort in that. Some people don't like spontaneity, but do they? So spontaneity, even. Oh, brilliant! So, in terms of like getting to um, theme parks by train, like what are some of the easiest ones to kind of do by uh, rail transport? Oh, the easiest ones by far. Um, Disneyland Paris is one of the easiest at the moment with its direct Eurostar straight into um, Marne, La Valley, Chessy, not Chessington World of Adventures. But yeah, that's a nice, easy one. Uh, Fantasia Land's also pretty damn easy to get to. It's literally into Brussels, over to Cologne, over to Brühl, then a bus. And then Efteling is also a nice rather easy one up to Rotterdam over to Tilburg and a bus it's nice we've never done Efteling by train have we Jay no I've we done um, Wallaby I've done Wallaby Belgium on my own on, on the train very hungover don't recommend <laughs> <laughs> probably a lot nicer not hungover <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> what, what are the kind of some of the more challenging parks that you've done by, by train 
Uh, the, the, the most challenging one by train uh, would be Power Park in Finland. Uh, that was, by my standards, probably a little bit challenging uh, based on how you get there, which is train down to London, you, uh, Eurostar over to Brussels. Well, I was meant to train to Brussels, but the train was cancelled. ended up going into Rotterdam, getting a train from Rotterdam over into Germany changing there, I can't remember which station, up to Hamburg, stay the night, then Hamburg over to Copenhagen, Copenhagen to Malmo, Malmo to Stockholm, stay the night, then a uh, quick bus over to the cruise ferry, cruise ferry over to Turku in Finland, and then from Turku over to Helsinki, stay the night, and then Helsinki up to Harma, and then it was a quick bus over to Power Park. Very easy, only oh. took about three days. Yeah, it's so simple. <laughs> so wow. simple. <laughs> if I have to do one change, I set them out. So. <laughs> yeah. Almost sounds as complicated as getting to towers on public transport these days. <laughs> Very much so, yes. <laughs> Nothing's as complicated as that, surely. <laughs> Even oh, going to Finland. <laughs> Are you sure you won't run the, the group visits thing? Because I would quite like to go to Finland, but I would not survive that on my own. <laughs> <laughs> please yeah maybe, maybe one day I, I could call myself coaster takes there you go yeah. <laughs> well, I like it how was power park it looks like it has some interesting girl flowers that are painted the same color uh, not just painted the same color it has exactly the same train on it or cars <laughs> <laughs> so, it was Junker and then, oh, I can't even remember what the Pit other special. one was called. Pit Special, that's it, because it's got a stupid bloody name. Um, <laughs> and Pit Special is nothing special, whereas <laughs> Junker is actually quite enjoyable. Junker is like, kind of like Anubis at Plopsalanda Pan, if you've done that. So it comes out of the station and it's straight into a nice little launch. And I think guests do those we uh, very well, indeed. Um, but Power Park is an interesting park. It's definitely worth going to if you happen to find yourself in Finland, in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of Finland, because it is a good three or four hours away from Helsinki, where most people end up going. Um, but it's owned by uh, someone who used to be dealing with the F1. Was he an F1 driver or something like that? built a little F1 circuit and then on the land next to it he's decided to build like a conference centre, a 4D theatre thing, uh, a hotel, a restaurant and then an amusement park and just put a few hundred millions in, into the park you know as you do um, and he's also got a lovely service station just by the end of the road so you, uh, as your car park you've got a service station you've got a tiny little petrol station with like two pumps on it and then it's uh, the service station itself is called Roadhouse and inside it's just got loads of random little bits which he's bought from like the film industry so there's also uh, there's a James Bond car in there and <laughs> also has yeah it's an authentic james bond car from one of the films it's got like an eiffel tower and stuff like that and then he's got a phone um an old phone box from the uk which was from somewhere like warrington and it still had its sticker on it as to where that <laughs> is and it's number so i was like wow this is this is mental but <laughs> it's, a, it's an interesting place it, it's it's an amusement park with a couple of decent rides in the middle of nowhere. I don't know, the service station sounds amazing. I want to go for that. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty damn decent, and particularly as we were like only one of like eight people in the entire building at the time. So <laughs> very weird. <laughs> Do you have any more train adventures you'd like to tell us about? Oh, train adventures I'd like to tell you about? Well... I can go on for bloody days. Um, going, over to Energylandia, <laughs> uh, going over to Energylandia. Going over to Energylandia in Poland. That was quite an interesting one. Did have to hire a car just for the last little bit, um, purely because the, the train station there has one train a morn in every day in the morning. I think it is, and no trains back. Um, so although it's very convenient, you can walk there within five minutes from. Energy land, you it's closer than Western Camp, uh, which is the park, which uh, park, um, the accommodation which most people do uh, just next to it. Um, there's just no trains, or at least if they, there are trains, they don't bloody stop there. So, um, but that was quite enjoyable. That was over to Germany, stay there again, and then PKP 
uh, nice restaurant car, stuff like that, heading over into Poland. That was gorgeous. Um, and then traveling a little bit by train in Italy. So obviously I flew over there when I originally did it. Um, and then doing the nice little local lines uh, of proper old tatty train. If you think the worst train you've ever been on in the UK, make it about 30 years older and that they hadn't cleaned it or de-dust, like dusted it in that time. So it was grimy, couldn't see out the windows. You don't really want to sit on the seats or anything like that. Um, Are you talking about the um, trains to Blackpool North? <laughs> yeah, pretty much like that. Yeah, well, with that the fast roads. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, and uh, you don't think the doors and the windows are actually going to stay in as the train rattles along. <laughs> yeah, one of those kind of things. Um, but I was ace. Uh, had the conductor come through, realise we were English, and then knock on and got the driver out whilst we were stay, staying at like a looped station. And a driver came in and he was like, oh, we love the British. They're so much better <laughs> than these, these Italians. Italians are assholes." So he said, <laughs> <laughs> like, okay thank you very much and he just like literally popped out just to be like look english people on our train <laughs> the dirtiest, train in the middle of uh italy that was going to mirror blandia that was so oh. wonderful <laughs> how is Catan? is it is it worth the trip uh yes yeah i i, I really enjoyed uh Catan. Uh, you can see that they've run out of money as it goes up because <laughs> it's got uh it's got theming and then as you go up the lift hill, it's got less theming and it's just got the supports for the theming and then nothing. And you're like, OK, this would have been nice if they finished it. I think it's meant to be like some sort of portal or uh, Egyptian thing. But what it is, it's, it's just like, oh, you're back into reality. There's a roller coaster here. Um, but yeah, Merrillandia is really quite nice. It's well worth going to. Let's have a look at this episode's trip or skip it. Um, obviously, with Pete here, we've picked somewhere that's easy to do by trains, and we pick Fantasia Land. How is getting the trains Fantasia Land, Pete? I think you said earlier that it was it was an easy one to do. Incredibly easy, um, easy by even if you want to just do half of it and get the plane into Cologne, um, you literally just go from the Cologne uh, Flughaven or the airport into Cologne Hauptbahnhof. Then over to Brühl and then a bus ride, and that takes under an hour to do that if your trains match up. Um, from England, nice and easy. Get yourself into London. Get yourself into bloody London. Eurostar over to Brussels, Brussels to Cologne, and then over to Brühl for the bus. And you could be there if you get a nice early Eurostar. You could be there for tea, to, well, lunchtime even. Oh, wow. Yes. Pretty good. Stu didn't do that option. He, no, he, I didn't. He got the flight. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I priced up Ryanair because uh, a Ryanair flight is obviously the price of the croissant and coffee on the Eurostar. So, um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, so um, this option is fly with, <laughs> with Ryanair um, on the 8th and 9th of May. So going out on Monday the 8th, going back on Tuesday the 9th of May. So it's a Monday to Tuesday. At the moment, Fantasia and like they did in the winter, have released a load of cheap tickets. So they're doing tickets from 26 euros. Obviously, if it is the effect we saw with their winter events, it will probably mean the park is going to be absolutely slammed. Um, but these are on selected dates between the 18th of April and the 21st of June. It's usually weekdays. But some Fridays are more expensive and some Mondays are more expensive. So it's best just to scroll through the calendar and have a look. So for these two days, it would be 26 euros per day. So the tickets then come out at 47 pounds. Um, the hotel, I've got a hotel in Brawl just across the streets from the train station. It's six, eat, work and sleep. And that is coming out at 40 pounds per person with breakfast. So all that all together is coming out £130. If you wanted to stay on site at Fantasyland, you can upgrade to Hotel Matamba for an extra £59, and that comes out £188.50 per person. What do you reckon, boys? Trip it or skip it? I was like, Mac go fair, sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Um, yeah, I think Fantasyland's always an awesome trip to do. The theme is good, the atmosphere is good. Uh, Terran's number one. Um, so that's good. Um, and at that price, you really can't argue. So yes, trip it. 
Yeah, I think I've got to agree. Like, I'd, I'd have to trip it because it's still a sacrificial fact. I've still not been on Taron or Fly. <laughs> Get off the podcast. Really? Yeah. <laughs> no, literally, this the worst bit is me and Stu both seeing them getting built and everything. And I've just not been back. What, what are you doing on the 8th and 9th of May? Uh, nothing at the moment. <laughs> Let me just get my availability calendar back out. <laughs> I've had to print off an Excel sheet with my <laughs> this year's already. <laughs> How does Pete manage it? He's already got 17 holidays booked. <laughs> <laughs> my availability, I, I could definitely go. Uh, in terms of this trip, uh, just to add in the train, if you did want to do it, only a hundred quid extra, uh, pennies, isn't it? Um, <laughs> I have actually stayed in six eat, sleep, work for Pete before. Oh wow! Um, and it's actually my go-to uh, place to go and stay if I'm not on site in Brule, nice and easy. Literally a two or three minute walk away from the bus. Um, and Fantasia Land is absolutely amazing. However, I'm not a fan of fly. Looks nice. I'm too old for it, but I would still trip it. Oh, fantastic. Ooh, controversial. So, hang on. I, I, I want to know more. <laughs> Why are you not a fan? I think Fly rides like a mine train, a Mac mine train as you're going over. You can feel the slowing down as it goes over the humps and then the sight speeding up and it's even got the sound of sounding like a bloody mine train. And um, if the whole trying to force you to face down but also trying to look forwards but can't really see where you're going just makes yeah. for a quite disorientating experience you said Stu mentioned something about this it, it kind of like it's a really uncomfortable head position that you put into yeah i think that's the advantage of air slightly is like you're not fully taken horizontal and not a lot of people realize that the bucket seat is actually further down than you think it is so you can still face forward and it's still a bit more comfortable. So, mm. But I've still got to get on Taran. So yeah, trip it. <laughs> <laughs> you have to do it. You have to do it. What, what's the hotel like, Pete? Ben? Have you, um, obviously, it's, it's not, it's pretty a coincidence because it's, it's the only hotel in Brawl. <laughs> but I picked this one. But <laughs> I didn't know you, you'd stayed there. I've stayed in two places in Brule itself. Uh, there's one which is a complete and utter shithole. Um, and then, That's why I didn't pick that one. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's six. Um, it's got massive rooms. It's quite boutique in a way. Um, it's, it's really quite friendly and comfortable. Uh, as I say, absolutely huge space. Like Your bed's like in the other bloody city, it feels like. <laughs> That's how big it is. Um, and yeah, you don't have to really speak to anybody if you don't want to. It's in a bar which you go and get your room key from, and then you never see them ever again, unless you pay for breakfast, of course. Um, but yes, it is really well worth doing. So if you're not like me and end up uh, staying in the hotel on site, throwing up all over Charles Lindbergh, as I was last time, uh, then six is the way to go. What's the story there? <laughs> yeah, we need, we need more. <laughs> Uh, well, it was a mixture of riding fly a bit too many times, being dehydrated, having three beers and a burger in the restaurant, <laughs> and it all mixing up and being like, oh, this isn't very nice. But what I have learned, sorry, this is a little bit, probably too much information, <laughs> is that the uh, if you've not seen uh, Charles Lindbergh's toilet in the bathroom, uh, it's like a public loo in the UK. So it's very metal based and goes in and you've got the thing if you end up throwing in up in that violently it will spray back at you it won't just spray at you it will spray all over the room and even the shower behind you so unfortunately for the uh, the, the poor cleaner there um the the wonderfully white grouting was very orange for the uh for him to sort out the next day and also the ventilation isn't very good in those tiny little cabins. So if you ever feel like you're going to throw up in there, don't <laughs> choose Charles Lindbergh to stay in. Not a very nice experience, that. I oh. recommend to stay at six instead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. At least you've got plenty of space to and uh, airing if you do end up throwing up. You can walk <laughs> half a mile to your next room, you know, the sofa, and you'll be okay. So. 
this is where I need you on, Pete. We need this expert advice. You just don't get another uh, podcast. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so maybe next time, if, if you watch our theme park um, roundup review of the hotel and you watch the Charles Lindbergh one, just go, Peter threw up all the way through this and you can just about <laughs> see maybe little bits of specks of remnants of it in that lovely little Oh, video. God. <laughs> <laughs> it's a reason to go back and watch it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear. <laughs> um, what are your thoughts? Uh, obviously, aside being ill, is it worth obviously paying that premium to stay at Charles Lindbergh? Um, uh, Fantasia Land has three accommodations. If if you're not aware, obviously you've got Hotel Matamba, you've got Hotel Lingbao, and then you've got uh, the Charles Lindbergh. Uh, Charles Lindbergh is more expensive than the other two because you have to have park entry and you have to have the food included, whereas the other two hotels, which are proper hotels, um, you can just do the bed and breakfast and nothing else if you don't want to. So it's more expensive, um, but they are smaller experiences. I think it's something which you should do once, preferably without throwing up all over the room. Um, but yeah, I'd, I'd say it's all once and done. I don't think it's something which you'd want to continually do unless you like being all over the pe uh, person you uh, stay with and have no respite from uh, the roller coaster just flying around uh, just outside your window, which looks awesome, but it does get a little bit tiring hearing it every couple of minutes. It's like, oh, there's a mine train just outside of me. I know, it's, it's fun. <laughs> But do they test it like early in the morning and late at night then when you're trying to sleep? Yeah, so the evening was absolutely fine. They, they just put it to bed and you're <laughs> sorted. Uh, you can, or at least when I stayed there, you could have a wander around in the evening. They kept the area open um, until about 11 p.m. So much like the other hotels, they used to keep um, Klugheim open and you could go and ride Tavern. This one, they just keep the area open, Ruckberg open. They don't have any rides open. In fact, there's only one ride in the area and it's fly and it's closed. So you can have a look at it and be like, oh, yes, it's a very pretty area, isn't it? And then you have to go to bed at 11 p.m. because there's nowhere else to be unless you want to be in the bar, I suppose. Uh, but yes, it's up early in the morning. Uh, we did the winter event, so it was 11 a.m. start, uh, but the ride was out and testing at eight. So it's relatively early. Yeah, I kind of feel um, when the tickets are full price, the um, Charles Lindbergh package makes sense. When the tickets are 26 euros, it doesn't work out to do Charles Lindbergh. It's a much bigger gap because you're paying full price for the two day tickets. If the tickets are full price, that's when Charles Lindbergh starts to make a bit more sense. And it's almost like the actual meal becomes free. So that kind of the value of the meal in the evening becomes free. And that's how it kind of works out. Others, obviously, other than the the coolness of staying around the roller coaster in that amazing immersive environment, I guess. Um, in Charles Lindbergh, obviously, you're just stuck with the menu, which is a very small, limited set menu. So it's like burgers. You will eat burgers. You have nothing else but burgers. Um, whereas, obviously, in the other hotels, you can go and do whatever you want. Enjoy some Chinese in, whilst staying in uh, Matamba, <laughs> sod it. Wow. Or you can go out the front of the entrance of the park and go to a dodgy little like window across the road and get some air <laughs> but burst <laughs> that basically makes you violently ill. <laughs> I was gonna say that, but it was 2006, which is quite it a, was few a years while ago. ago. I don't know if that window is still there. <laughs> Food Hut is still very much there, isn't it? Really? Hey. Uh, yeah, it's the snack. I can't even remember where it is. It says snack something. It looks um very non fantasia land like suits the that suits what? the berlin plaza doesn't it so it's like <laughs> oh this is something you go to in the bloody 1960s me and Stu are quite fussy eaters and back in the ling bao days is the only options on the on the food menu were, were not a not available to us <laughs> no. <laughs> no it was like we asked whether we could just have a plate of chips and you're like no <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember, Jay, when we were staying in the um, Ling Bao um, at breakfast, that panda costume character was like pressed against the window. And the woman that was eating didn't know. And it was a, a good 15 minutes before she turned and realised there was a big fluffy panda pressed against the window. <laughs> and the whole restaurant was looking at this point and everyone was in hysterics. This poor woman. <laughs> oh, oh, God. 
I miss the old uh, Fantasia mascots. It's a very <laughs> nice suite that we stayed in. <laughs> yes. Uh, I thought the suite was 500 euros for our total stay. No, when I got the bill, it was 500 euros per night. Oh, <laughs> so, so. oh my God. How, how long were you there for? Luckily, Have you a week. <laughs> <laughs> and also, we slept in. We like, they rang it. We like woke up one minute before we had to check out as well. So we're almost going to get oh. charged again for another night. <laughs> oh, my away. God. Oh, I was badly ill with that food poisoning. Stu was absolutely dying with flu slash cold that he always gets whenever we go away. And it was just, oh my God, it was such a a slog to get out that morning. And I'd lost my driving license and I had people sending me everywhere. Like we've seen it. It's at this place. It was like I was on Treasure Hunt and I was on Echo Rice. It's like, right, you need to go over here. And I'll go over there. I go, no, no, it's, it's not there now. It's over here. And in the end, the yeah. lady in guest services tipped the bin out from yesterday and was piecing the pieces of her note back together where she'd written it down. And it turns out it was at the security gate where Fly is now. It's come full circle. Yeah. Full circle. <laughs> so, was that, they, we, I literally got we, my um, driving license while Jay was holding the bus, the Fantasy Line shuttle. And uh, yeah. Yeah, we, we, he was like, we can't, the bus can't go. My friend needs to get his driving license back. <laughs> And yeah, that's when we got the train, Jay. That was a. Uh... It was. Yeah, yeah. It's oh, come full God. circle. <laughs> Love that. All the out and back tips—they come from experience. Stu's been there. <laughs> <laughs> Thankfully, yeah. not vomiting all over uh, Charles Lindbergh yet, but uh, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, <laughs> how was the splash uh, Would you on. rate leaving your uh, driving license in Fantasia Land? Yeah, they looked after it very well. <laughs> <laughs> It's a good place to lose some property. If you're going to lose an A theme park, Fantasyland, they will make sure you get it back. <laughs> Should we do mean comments? Yeah. Good times. So uh, back in August, Eurostar announced that it was axing the direct train services from London to Disneyland Paris in 2023 due to Brexit. Understandably, people were very upset and I've dredged the comments section from the news reports to find the meanest, angriest, daftest comments, uh, which we're going to perform as a fan poem, which we are calling... Uh, Mousetrap. Mousetrap, yeah, thanks, Pete. Yeah. Mm. Thank yeah. you. Awesome, let's go. <laughs> are they taking the mickey? Good. The further we keep our kids away from Disney, the better. So rather than a direct train, you have to change trains on the way. How awful. Prayers to all the passengers. Me in America. You guys get direct trains. How hard is it to change trains? I change trains all over Europe and I'm no linguist. What the hell did we build it for then? Just go to the one in Florida. It's much better anyways. Travel to France to Disneyland, cheaper to visit London Downing Street for Muppet Show. Good. Disney Perv Paris can woke up. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Thanks for coming on, Pete. Thanks for inviting me on. That's on okay. Of Theme Park Roundup. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely check out Theme Park Roundup on YouTube and all its uh, social channels, but mainly YouTube, I guess. That's where you're kind of based, really, isn't it? That's where we hide. Yep, in yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if you enjoy what we do, please do help us out by commenting, subscribing, and liking and sharing and all that jazz, as it will help us to reach more people. And remember, guys, until next time, stay safe on the way. I'm back. Bye. Thanks, guys.